Next up tonight, the Panasonic Doozy Canoe Marathon, which has become somewhat a tradition in South African history. With all the recent rains, though, that fell in KwaZulu-Natal, the river turned from something that was a known entity into, in some areas, the unknown. It was a very good day for us. Uh, the weather suited us, um, cool, a decent level in the water, and on the runs we were able to hang in on the guys. It was quite ironic, the paths were, were muddy and wet, so the guys couldn't run away, they could only walk up, up the muddy paths and we were able to hang in on them. And by halfway through the race, we were able to get a bit of a gap and extend the lead towards the end, so it was a great day for us. Second day? Um, second day was good. We, we had a lead, so we didn't have to go out and make the break as we normally do. We were quite surprised to be leading off to the first day. So we just shadowed um, Kevin and Gavin for the first hour and a half through the tricky stretches and over the portages. And then once we got within sight of the dam, we made our break and then extended our lead to... We got another four minutes on the second day. Um, the way Neil and Mark are paddling, we doubt it. They'll have to make a real big mistake if we can catch them. We're going to try, but we doubt whether we'll catch them. We've had a very nice race so far. Um, we've made no mistakes. Everything's gone according to plan. The water level's been very nice. It was a bit hot yesterday, but um, other than that, everything's gone very well. Thanks. And so a welcome to come on in and enjoy the waters, the waters of the doozy, for this year's running of the three-day canoe ultramarathon. The leaders after day two all feeling very confident about their chances on this, the last day of the race. No staggered start this year, although the seeded paddlers all going off before the main pack gets started. The river very high because of all the rains, and those higher levels meaning that the portages have become shorter in some places, which has suited the slower runners such as Mark Perro and Neil Evans. They took out a clear minute on pre-race favourites Gavin Tarr and Mark White after Tarr twisted an ankle on one of the muddier sections. On day two, Perro and Evans consolidated their slim lead, bursting away from the pack on the flat waters of Inanda Dam to pick up another four minutes. A compulsory portage at the Inanda Dam wall and with a level of water this high, that makes a lot of sense. Back on the river and White and Tarr starting to pick up the pace as they hit the first of the rough water stages, eager to try and maintain their lead on this stage and pull back into overall second place, as well as cutting down some of the lead of the Gauteng Springbok pair as well. Close behind them, Kwasilin Natal pair Bruce Wenk and Paddy Strickland currently in second place and second overall and also chasing hard. Rescue teams out in force and stationed all along the river at the rough sections to make sure everyone gets through safely. And with the river pumping through four times as much water as normal, that's a good move from the organizers. Perro and Evans were the first non kwazulu Natal paddlers to ever win the doozy when they took the title in 1992. And the local paddlers out to try and make sure that doesn't happen this year as well. Although the conditions are making everyone struggle every inch of the way. The river taking its toll on the paddlers every step of the way, most of the canoes overturning at some stage or another, which means losing precious minutes as the water has to be emptied out completely and the hole checked before carrying on. And even then, there's the likelihood that at the next rough patch, it'll happen again. But for some, the incredible water flow is just like another day at the office. Although Evan Krabs might appreciate the awesome majesty of a river that consumes roads in their entirety, as well as the beauty of the waterfalls along the doozy, pouring hundreds of feet in full flow. No time to look around for Iron Man, Hank Wartemeyer and Bruce Clark, who were steadily slipping down from the fourth place that they'd achieved on day one, although now in the lead at the start of the long grind over the Burma Road. And as Wayne Follick and Ken Holden slipped past, making the decision to paddle around the long, hard portage because of Follick's twisted ankle, the crowd prepared to shout their encouragement for all the paddlers taking the land route, which cuts out a long section of the river and five sets of rapids. But with the river at this height, the rapids proved to be not too much of a problem, while the conditions made things treacherously slippery for the runners, making their way over what seemed to be a hill of mud. And then came the news that overall leaders Perro and Evans had T-boned a rock in the side chute rapids just before the portage, making a large hole in the boat and only just managing to make it to the Burma Road outtake before sinking. And that meant that suddenly the race had blown wide open again, 
The five-minute gap enjoyed by the overnight leaders about to shrink rapidly as the Gauteng pair would be forced to make running repairs during the portage or face sinking before the end. Already the lead was down to just two minutes and after two and a half days it was anyone's race once more with capsizes happening regularly to add another wild card to the deck. the back markers, it was not so much a race against other paddlers as a contest against themselves and against the river. With the river often winning out of temporarily overturning canoes at every opportunity and making this one a battle to remember for all those taking part. But that's what the doozy is all about and that's why more and more paddlers turn up every year to take part. And while those at the back were running on a sink or swim policy, other sections of the race were being decided. In the women's race and on track for a new record, Debbie Witten and Wendy White, wife of third place Kevin White, were extending their lead over experienced pair Sandra Erdley and Rory Bohm, and at one stage reached as high as seventh overall against the men. And in the mixed section, doozy king Graham Pope Ellis and wife Wendy were moving ahead of early leaders Clint Mork and Nanette Rennie in the hunt for yet another title. But back at the Burma Road, the leaders were still struggling through the wet grass. Kevin White and Gavin Tarr just ahead of Bruce Wenker and Paddy Strickland on the uphill. And even here, the conditions were taking a toll. Bruce Clark and Hank Fartome are letting the boat slip for a moment as they cross a stream. Because of the change in daily starting, with the leaders no longer settled individually at the intervals they finished the day before, the Edmonds brothers down in sixth at the moment, but not knowing quite where they are on the leaderboard. And the only thing Perro and Evans are interested in at the moment is getting repairs completed to their canoe by one of the seconds before reaching the end of the Burma Road. Perro still upset at their having made the mistake in hitting a rock in the first place. The hole in the bow now taped, but that won't last for too long as the water starts to work its way through. So the race still there for the taking, with the lead of Perro and Evans now reduced to just 45 seconds. Porting across the Burma Road cuts the distance approximately in half at this stage, but Volek and Holden's decision to paddle round instead of porting was proving to be a very good one, as they were now well ahead of the rest of the pack, who are now only putting the canoes back in. Wallach and Holden with a good two minutes now on the chase group behind them and fairly clear water ahead all the way down to the finish just before the river runs into the Indian Ocean. Behind them, White and Tarr and Strickland and Wenko are keeping each other company, knowing that the race wasn't with the current leaders but with the time gap set up by Perrin Evans over the previous two days. Back in fourth spot, Star and Elico are also making good time, moving well in overall fifth and looking for a top four finish if possible. But it was just behind them that all the drama was happening. Perro and Evans managing to tuck in behind a very obliging Oscar Chalupski and Les Kay and the Edmonds brothers. As they nursed their boat towards the finish line, the tape nose starting to deteriorate and causing a huge bow wave, which is slowing them right down. And at the finish line, it's Volek and Holden who complete the last stage first. Their time of 2 hours 11.06, enough to push them up the leaderboard, but was it enough for an overall win? And in the end, it wasn't. Perro and Evans holding on to the slimmest of leads on overall time to take the doozy title for the second time in four years. Wenka and Strickland finishing second in 8 hours 18.58, and White and Tarr third another three minutes back. For the ladies, Whitten and White wrapped up their win in fine style as well as finishing in the top 50 overall, the highest placed women ever. 
And the undisputed king of the doozy, Graham Pope Ellis, combined with his wife Wendy in their first major competition together to take every title going in the race. The singles, doubles and mixed crowns. And in true doozy spirit, it was congratulations all round. Um, it's such an incredible feeling. Um, from about three k's up, and we knew that we were going to win the first day, the, the third day today, I had this incredible goose pimple feeling. Uh, it was a feeling that I can't actually express. Um, I think something was really on our side today because on Monday, before the race, um, we were part of one of the favourites to win, and I pulled ligaments going over Burma. It was badly, very badly pulled, and. Um, I think today we took a chance, we paddled around Burma. It was, the water was incredibly hard. One or two times we were lucky and we made it and I think we pulled three minutes on the guys going over. We definitely had to work for our money. We were behind uh, after we damaged our boat. We, we did a couple of options where we ran a little too far. The guys got gaps on us and it was really hard work towards the end. Fortunately, we were able to work with other guys and just hold our, our lead there. So it was a really hard race right through to the end. But that's what made it so enjoyable. And each week, Runner's Diary is...